In this video, I'm going to give you a quick guide on how to choose and build your first scale model. My name's Steve Malley. I've worked at the Tank Museum for eight years and I have the best office in the world. In my spare time, I like building scale models. I've been modelling since I was a small child. I think I started doing it as about five or six. Uh, got into it because my father was an engineer and as with most people of my generation, I kind of like taking things apart and putting them back together again. So my dad bought me my first, uh, first kit. Uh, I think it was a, an Airfix Spitfire. Put together uh, by, with using my sister's nail varnish as glue uh, and coloured with felt tip pens. So if you'd like to get into modelling, the first thing you need to do is choose your kit. There are lots of different types of kits on the market at the moment. There's these push together types which give you a nice large model with no glue. We also have the plastic brick type kits. These ones are the Kobe range, covers all subjects from World War I tanks, World War II tanks, aeroplanes, and we even have the famous Tiger 131. We also have the push together type kits. No glue required. Literally just cut the pieces off and push them together and have some fun. But when you think about model making, this is what most people have in mind. The injection molded plastic kit. Once you've chosen what you want to build, next thing is scale. How big or small do you want it? We'd all love to have a one-to-one, a, -one, a full-size tank in our living room, but unfortunately, not many of us have got the space. Popular scales are 1 16th scale. This is probably one of the bigger sizes. 1 72nd, up to 1 35th. 1 35th is by far the most popular scale, big enough to build and build into a nice, impressive model that will fit onto anybody's desk. So to help you get started here at the Tank Museum, we've put together a starter set, which includes everything that you need to build a nice model. So we've got the, the kit, the glue, the snippers, the brushes, the sanders, the paint, and the accessories. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is Make sure all the parts are there. Check with the instructions uh, and just make sure that everything is supposed to be, that is supposed to be there is there. Next, this is your instruction sheet. Thoroughly read through it. Make sure that you're happy with which version of the vehicle that you want to build. For this particular one, there are four different types with different decal sheets. We're going to be building the first Polish division similar to our vehicle, which is behind me. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to be building the turret for you today, which our stage is in this kit 12 to 16. So before you start, what I normally like to do is uh, to wash all the parts, a little bit of warm water and some washing up liquid. Um, when it comes out of the moulding, there, there are some release agents still left on there. So for a better finish at the, towards the end of the model, it's always better just to wash it off and just let it dry. For the parts, each part is numbered on a numbered sprue. So for this one, this is the D sprue, which refers to the, the D parts on the instruction sheet. With most kits, most, most parts are spread out over multiple, multiple sprues. So not everything that you're going to want for the section of the kit that you're building is on one sprue. So it's better to open all of, all of the bags and familiarise yourself with where most of the parts are. The drawings are quite accurate and will help you follow the simple instructions later on. It's always best to have some sort of table covering. Uh, if you're like me and you work on the dining table at home or the kitchen table, it can cause an awful lot of problems later on if you've spilt glue or paint. Uh, so here I'm just using a, a basic cutting mat and working over the instructions. Uh, so the first stage that we're going to be showing is the, the gun barrel which for this kit are parts D35 and 36. So we literally find the D sprue, look around the gates until we find 35 and 36, get your snippers and then cut the parts off. When you cut the parts off, always try to cut away from the actual piece itself. Uh, you can always trim back later on. There are the first two parts cut off the gates uh, and you'll see I don't know if you can see, there's a, a small part of plastic left where we've just cut it off from. Then just use your snippers and get in a little bit closer. And 
then next thing is before we start to glue just test fit the parts make sure that they actually fit together properly and there are no unsightly gaps or seams if there is don't worry we can always take care of that later on with our sanding sponge seems to fit together okay next thing is the glue on the parts there are some small locating pins try not to just remove them they do help later on again test fit make sure that everything is okay and it will line up and then for the glue thing to remember with the glue is less is always more uh, we try not to go back to being teenagers when we glued our fingers together and our stuff to the stuff to the table uh, and even if using other solvent glues getting yourself taken to A&E to have the glue removed then just put the pieces together make sure they're all lined up slight squeeze and that's our gun barrel belt put it to one side then move on to the next stage which for this kit is the loading breach have you ever had any modelling disasters? you haven't lived till you've been to Celio Hospital with a Harrier jump jet glued to your face I did a Harrier jet I must have been about 12 and it was the first time I ever used photo etch and super glue and uh, yeah I ended up in A&E Celio Hospital with a, a large Harrier glued to the side of my face because you know when you go like that to see if it's straight <laughs> and it was like my dad, my dad was cross because he had to come out of work it was one of those things that my mum told every girlfriend I ever had A space, uh, space shuttle. I uh, really wanted to build the space shuttle. Right. Uh, but it's one of those things that's too big for the space that I have. The perception is the, the US space shuttle is quite small, uh, and even in one seventy second, it's probably about that big. So it's, uh, it's quite a large model. You never fancied the, right of the door a rail gun? I've started one. <laughs> <laughs> I, built, I bought it when it first came out and I started one but I never actually completed it. It was too much. Six and a half feet long. I sold it in the end. Part, part started, I sold it eBay. Did you ever blow any of your old kits up? Yeah. Air rifle, fireworks, airsoft gun. Bangers in the turret. We used to make a, a zip line, me and my brother used to make a zip line from, from the bedroom window down to the washing line and then hang aeroplanes off and slide them down. If I work in, yeah. in the British one, then slide the German, put it, light it, slide it down and slide the German one down and blow up on the washing line. Okay, so we've made some progress on the turret and we've made two sub assemblies uh, so what we're going to do now is uh, make sure they all line up which hopefully they do and put them both together so we've just checked all our fit everything lines up nice and square so now we're just going to gently pull them back out and apply some glue if you do make a mistake with the glue and it does go everywhere don't panic uh, the, the trick is just make sure that you put the model down, leave it alone for a couple of hours, wait for the glue to dry, then just go back. It's easy to clean it off once it's dry. A lot, a lot more complicated to try and get it off if it's all still wet. Uh, to remove it once it's dry, just use a sanding sponge. Um, and e e even if you do make a mistake and you end up with your fingerprint stuck on there, just wait for it to dry, then lightly rub it with your sanding stick and that will remove it. So it goes parts 12, 13 and 14 done, which gives us a very basic rudimentary Cromwell turret. Uh, 
Uh, normally I'd, I'd put all the hatches on and complete the turret before the painting, uh, but just for demonstration purposes, we'll get on with some paint now, just to show you the basic premise of the painting stages. Uh, what comes in the kit, you get three high quality Tamiya brushes, the ammo from MIG uh, starter set, this one is uh, British 1939 to 1945, so it contains the basic colours to complete the kit. So what we're going to do is, because I've got green plastic, just to show you, I'll use a, a lighter colour, um, which is a, a lighter brown. Always remember to shake it really well, uh, just to rejuvenate the pigments as they are an acrylic base, so they do separate. Then what we can do is decant a little bit of the paint, pick up the brush that you want to, load up the brush and just take a little bit off then reload up the brush and I'll show you on the, on the under the underneath just very lightly go around the edges picking out the corners this paint's really nice it's quite thin so you can always go over it a couple of times to build up the base colors so that's had one coat normally just leave that for about 15 20 minutes and then just repeat the process and you'll build up the colour. To clean off, really simple, just water. Obviously using the, the brush will give you a, a nice little finish, but if you want to move your painting on to the next level, then I recommend using a, a surface primer. What that does is base coat the whole kit, then go over with your standard green, and that will really help improve the finish of your model. Welcome back. As you can see, I've taken the model home and completed it. Production wise, it really took me about 15 hours to build, so not too long, no real issues with the kit. Painting, primed first, and then about four really thin layers, brush painted on. The only additions that I put on were the aerials, made from uh, bristles from a brush, a little bit of silver paint around the track area, just to accentuate the details. Uh, so a little bit of black for seat pads, and we added on all of the stowage. Painted with the brown colour, a little bit of black on the straps. Um, really pick anywhere that you want to put it on the tank, there's no right or wrong. A little dab of super glue uh, and put it on. Um, as you can see, it all comes with the starter kit and I think it really makes a, a nice model. Um, now we're going to get on and do some decaline. They normally come on a small, small sheet. Um, and what we're going to do is just cut them out, put them in some water, and apply them to the vehicle. So on the decal sheet we have the markings for all the vehicles that are included in the kit. We're going to be doing the HQ Squadron 1st Polish Armoured Division uh, which is very similar to the vehicle that I've got behind me. I'm going to find all the markings on here, cut them out and then we'll apply them. Putting decals on is really really simple. All you need is some warm water, brush that was included in, the, in your starter set and a cotton bud. So just get yourself your medium sized brush, dip it in the water, find the location for where the first deck you, you want to put on is. So we're going to put on our allied stars first, these go on the stowage bins. Just put a little bit of water down, that will soften and wipe off any of the marks. Use your brush to pick up the decals themselves. Just drop them in the water, get them nice and wet, and then just put them on the side to soften. Normally it takes a, a couple of minutes just for the, the decal to actually soften and come off the paper. So the decal's now soft and is free of the decal paper. So just using your brush, gently lift it up find out where, exactly where it goes using the instructions on your vehicle. Just slowly drop it on, move it into position. Using a little bit more water. Then using your cotton bud, just gently roll over the top, taking all the water off and pushing the decal down onto the surface of the vehicle. And there you've got your, your decal 
in position. Depending on the vehicle that you choose, there can be uh, an awful lot of decals which can take quite a, quite a long time. Uh, the trick is, is to just do a couple um, and then go away and come back. It's, it's much easier to do it when you're in the mood and you get a much better model if you actually do it when you feel like doing it rather than feeling forced to get it completed. Uh, back in the commission days, yeah, because I built an aircraft carrier for somebody and it had 92 aircraft on the top of it, it's like a metre long and yeah, putting individual decals on aircraft that are this big can be quite head doing, shall we say, for want of a better word. Well that's a decaling complete, uh, so the model itself is now built, painted and decaled. Uh, it took, probably took about 20 minutes to put those on, so not, to, not too bad. Um, what we can do now is, uh, is display the vehicle. Um, some people just like to put them on a plinth, put them on a shelf. Uh, others like to build dioramas. Um, what I tend to do is something really small and simple, just by little things like bits of grass mat. What that does is just put, sets the scene for the vehicle and you can always add a couple of figures on later on um, but as you can see the model is complete um, Tamiya's 135th scale Cromwell uh, finished in the Polish 1st Armoured Division's markings hope you enjoyed that happy modelling if you would like to get into modelling then please do visit the Tank Museum's online shop we have all the kits that you would need as well as all the tools, paints, including the stuff that we used on the starter set that we've built today. Well I hope you've enjoyed that video. Uh, please subscribe to the Tank Museum's YouTube channel and if you can support us on Patreon.